gravity is not a force. Physicists have been preaching this ever since Einstein came along and told us that gravity is really just the consequence of living in a curved space-time. But maybe we were all wrong. In a new paper that came out just a few weeks ago, a team of physicists proposes that gravity might be a force after all. And if you trust the press release, which maybe you should not, this brings us closer to a theory of everything. I've had a look. In the standard model of particle physics, every force is carried by a particle. Electromagnetism has the photon, the strong nuclear force has gluons, and the weak nuclear force has W and Z bosons. Some people insist the Higgs boson is a kind of force carrier too, and I think they have a point, but I'll let someone else die on that hill. The relevant part is that all these forces in the standard model have force carriers. Gravity, according to Einstein, is not a force. It's a consequence of the curvature of space-time itself. That picture works beautifully for planets and stars, but when you try to use it at the quantum level, it all falls apart. The hypothetical force carrier of gravity, the graviton, stubbornly resists all attempts to fit it into the same mathematical framework as the other forces. The infinities in the equation just do not go away. Way. But the authors of this new paper say we've been thinking about it all wrong. Forget about curved space-time, they argue. Space is flat, always has been and always will be. Instead, they introduce four new bosons, one for each direction of space and time. It sounds odd at first. Four separate force carriers for one interaction? But the idea is that these four bosons work together to produce the effects we normally attribute to gravity. When you do the math, they claim the four bosons merge and give exactly a spin-2 particle, which is the graviton. But that is not even the most surprising part. They also managed to recover the equations of general relativity, Einstein's own equations from this setup. How is that possible if space is flat? The trick is something called teleparallel gravity. It's an idea Einstein himself worked on back in the 1920s. Normally, gravity in Einstein's theory is described by curved spacetime. Heavy objects span the space around them. Teleparallel gravity gives you the same effect, but in flat space, by adding something called torsion to the propagation of particles. So instead of curving space, gravity creates little twists and warps that accumulate to produce the same effects. The authors show that the four bosons recreate this exact mechanism and we already knew that this gives us back Einstein's theories, so the math checks out. The biggest claim in the paper is that this formulation avoids the usual problems with trying to quantize gravity. They calculate at least some leading quantum corrections and the infinities seem to cancel out in a way that doesn't happen with traditional gravitons. This suggests that treating gravity as a force in this way might finally make it compatible with quantum mechanics. That'd be a big deal. So basically, what they did was to say, we reformulate general relativity in this teleparallel form, introduce force carriers in that different formulation, quantize those, and that seems to work much better. Of course, it's not all sunshine and flat space-time. For one thing, at least the calculation they use in the paper doesn't respect the four symmetries of Einstein's theory. This might just be because otherwise they couldn't do the calculation, but I'd be worried that this will lead to deviations from Einstein's theory that are in conflict with observation. They say in the paper that the deviations are extremely small because they're only quantum effects, but I'm not so sure about this. The other issue is that they are a far cry away from proving that this is a consistent way to quantize gravity. Finally, though, there is the complexity. Gravity in flat space, but with four gauge bosons, a matrix field to hold phase factors and torsion instead of curvature. Even if it works, good luck convincing anyone to use it. Then again, it's not like string theory is exactly known for its parsimony, and they could get some thousands of physicists to swallow that. You know me for calling out bullshit theories of everything, but I think this one might actually be a promising new way to look at how to quantize gravity. 
I also quite like the idea that my videos about how gravity is not a force will one day become historical data. So they told you that no one understands quantum physics. I think that's wrong. It's totally understandable. You can give it a try yourself with my quantum course on Brilliant. My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.